So from here, we can move to next slide. So how about this? Uh, how handling DLL, right? So since DLL cannot run by itself, we need to use tools, other tools, right? So and I have a, a sample, and that is a malware sample. I just uh, have a DLL, which is very simple DLL. So let's take a look at this DLL. So please go back to your victim VM. We can just use this uh, VM for now because this malware actually didn't run, right? Because it's a DLL. How about please close out all, close all windows and go to um, malware class. Do you see this uh, misc directory? Do you see hello.dll? Right? Let's open this one with a CFF Explorer. When you click right mouse button, then there is an option, right? Open CFF Explorer. So, what did I mention before? When you look at the uh, P5, what's the most important part? One was the uh, import directory, right? If there is an external file, then what you know this uh, malware is using, you know, what kind of functionality? But on the uh, other hand, in case of DLL, like the library, what is the most important uh, functionality of the DLL? It is providing APIs to others, right? Because it's a library. So for DLL, you uh, actually import the uh, directory is important. But not only that, the export directory is important for DLL, right? So when you uh, highlight export DLL, then you can see what this DLL is providing, what kind of functionality, right? So what do you see? You see the, uh, can you see the echo and say hello to a function being exported? Yes, right? Okay, that means since it is exporting, so executable by uh, is actually uh, can use this, uh, can call these uh, functions from the outside, right? So let's then uh, let's close CFF Explorer. Then for uh, this uh, how, uh, using to run DLL, we will uh, learn two ways to uh, run DLL. Okay, and let's open. Malware class. I just close the uh, all windows on the victim VM and malware class tools. And do you see there is a remote DLL? Okay. And let's run this remote DLL 32. Right. Then how about this? Let's just for the as a one application. Let's run on um, Internet Explorer. Right? Just let it run. You don't need to use it here. Right? And here, there is actually interesting. This one is the DLL injection tool, right? We learn create remote thread, right? Now now you know what this one is, right? Like maybe three days before you made didn't know what is it, what is this, right? And just there is a different way to do it. We actually skip the uh, uh, APC injection part, the delayed injection. But uh, if I have time later on, I can touch it. But the remote DLL provides two ways to inject DLL into into the application, right? Here, and let's uh, select the uh, target process. I just press here target process button and I will select one of the uh, Internet Explorer instance, process instance here. Select and do you see a uh, PID and then Internet Explorer here listed? I selected here, target process and selected on Internet Explorer instance from this window. You got it? All right. So, and from DLL name, I will select from the desktop malware and misc and hello.dll. 
is selected hello.dll, path is desktop, malware class, misc, and hello.dll. All right, everyone has it? All right, then now let's start inject, uh, injecting DLL here. All right, when you see here, it says successfully injected the DLL into target process. All right, so it is actually injected, but you don't see anything, right? You don't see the hello message or you know the echo, but since you didn't give any value, there is a uh, no echo function being called. So, however, you know, keep in mind that once DLL loaded, and there is a way it can a uh, DLL can run the code immediately after it's been loaded, right? Without even any you know exported function being called there's a normal uh, DLL main so that is uh, there can be a, a DLL can uh, run some code all right so how about this is just showing you one or two they can you can uh, launch a DLL and let's close it I will just uh, close Internet Explorer and close those apps and I'll just close everything or here on the victim VM, right? Do you have still victim VM running? Right. Now let's move to run DLL32.exe. So this is another tool you can uh, run launch a DLL. So I just uh, run the uh, DOS terminal here. Start, run, and CMD. Right. And let's change change the directory to desktop. I just press CD desktop. And CD desktop. You better so we will change the uh, directory to desktop and when you see it as uh, here you are at the uh, page 31 so once you change the uh, desktop you can run the uh, run dls32.exe but let's see the uh, syntax here so you will run 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 dls32.exe uh, so what you need to give is dll path and one of the uh, exported function name here and then you can even give the optional argument All right so let's run uh, the hello.dll and the actual run dll path is windows system 32 and run dll 32.exe Actually, sorry about that. Actually, before doing this one right now, when you do DIR, because we actually want to change the directory to the, you know, where uh, the hello DLL uh, is located in. So let's change it from the desktop and CD malware and misc. So you should be uh, inside the directory student, desktop, malware class, and misc. And you should see the, when you do the uh, DIR, you should see hello.dll. Do you have that? All right? Then let's run uh, run DLL. All right. 
DLL. And the syntax was one DLL uh, 32.exe and DLL path, which is in the same directory, right? So you can give the uh, run uh, hello that DLL and make you make sure have comma, right? And what was actually I should have uh, not asked you to close the uh, CFF Explorer, but I'll just put it here. So one of the function the exported was say hello. So how about this? You don't need to open this one, but I'll just show you here. My web class was mit hello dot dll was I use exporting say hello and the echo function. Right? So we were back here and we will just call our uh, say hello function. Now do you see here? Right? So this is basically one to run a uh, run a DLS, which run DLS32 is a tool. Without making the executable file, you can just use this command line tool to call a uh, ex uh, exported function. And did you get this uh, uh, hello world uh, pop up? Everyone's good? All right. How about say hello? Uh, no, so how about the echo? As you know, as always, the API is you know represent what it uh, the what API will do, right? If it's echo, you are gonna do echoing, right? So that means it maybe is expecting a parameter, right? So you can put parameter like something like this. Echo and high exclamation point. Then you're gonna be echo. You can put something else. You're gonna put a basically have a pop up with a, a string that you just uh, put it as an argument. Any question about the uh, uh, handling and how to handle the LL? Sure. Uh, for the DLL, it shows uh, multiple, I guess, multiple pop-ups. Does it matter which one you choose? Right. Uh, if uh, uh, remote DLL, what does matter is you one is you cannot choose process that has higher privilege. That's one uh, there is J. And actually, now I'm thinking about it. I didn't actually check. It maybe not even show you the uh, process that has a higher privilege. But I'm just guessing. But you know, just by rule, you cannot uh, inject any DLL that has a higher privilege. All right. So the question was: Is there any rule when the uh, remote DLL uh, when it's uh, uh, displaying the process? Is there any rule? So the answer is. Uh, I didn't actually check, but it may not show the uh, processes that has a higher privilege. But in general, you cannot inject a DLL into the higher, higher, uh, uh, into the processes that has a higher privilege, right? All right. 